want to continue our conversation about graphing absolute value functions. Let this be part two, please. Well, we spoke in the last video about what effect changing A has, and we came to the conclusion that changing A changes the steepness of the curve. So an absolute value curve might look like this. If the A value gets close to zero, it would get flatter. And if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, go back to the last video. I think it was really helpful. But this will be something different. In this video, what I really want to talk about is what happens if we change H, uh, and then what happens if we change K. So if we could start with this idea in mind, that we're going to start, everything is going to have this, Y equals A times the absolute value of X minus H plus K. And the first thing I want to do is look at what changing H has for us. So let's do that now. So this is what I'm doing. I'm in the graphing part of my TI Inspire calculator. I'm going to go to this key right here. I'm going to, I'm going to click this. Right? I'm just going to put X here and say, this is what this function looks like in general. So there it is in general. So I'm wondering now, and if you look at this, I'm hoping that you'll agree with me, that this is the same as it right here, is X minus zero, because X minus zero is just X, isn't it? So what would happen if I did this? What would happen? If I chose the same thing, and instead of putting just, right, I'm saying to you, the, the one that's already graphed is this one, right? That's the one we already see. But what if I put, instead of zero there, what if I put three? What would that do to the function? So let's take a look. Um, before I do that, just tell me, you know, kind of think to yourself, what do you think is going to happen? And were you right? So if we look at this, we see that the green function compared to the red one, seems to have moved over one, two, three units to the right, doesn't it? But it has x minus three. Well, why is that true? So let's see what happens. Let's try one more and see if we can figure out what's going on here. Like this. And now I'm going to put in x plus three. If x minus three moved it over one, two, three to the right, will x plus three move it over three to the left? What do you think? And yeah, it did. So brings up a question to a lot of people. What's going on here? Well, ask yourself this question. This equation right here that moves to the left. When is x plus 3 equal to 0? And isn't the question negative 3? So if I put negative 3 in here for x, negative 3, right, x is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0, and the absolute value of 0 is 0. And then you look at this one over here, and it's the same question, isn't it? When is x minus 3 equal to 0? Well, when x is 3. So if when x is 3, 1, 2, 3, 3 minus 3 is 0, and we have a height of 0. So this is what I hope we're getting here, that that changing h moves the vertex, actually the whole function, but the vertex h units horizontally horizontally now I don't know how you're going to say this to yourself but this is an important note that it moves it over the opposite direction that you think so when we look at this we're like oh well look this is positive 3 right here right but positive 3 moves it over 3 to the left didn't it and this one here this one had an h value looks like right if we have x minus 3 but it moved it over from here to the right by 3 so remember that it moves it over in the opposite direction of the sign that you see, right? And there's a reason for that, and I think we described it. So, so we have that. Got it? Okay, so let's, what we're left with now, so we have, whoops, <laughs> we have y is equal to a times x minus h plus k. Now let's get on and figure out what happens if we, if we move, if we change k. So let's do that now. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to insert graphs again, and then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put in the same function that we had before, so we have something to compare to. X, right? So there's our parent function. Well, what would happen if I entered this? What would happen if I did this? If I chose absolute value of X, if I put X in the absolute value bars, and outside of that I put plus 3, and I hit enter, what do you think is going to happen? Is that what you anticipated? That the slope of this thing didn't get different, didn't change one bit. But what did change was the height. That when we changed this k value, added positive 3, it lifted it up. 
one, two, three units up. And let's just be sure of that. And how we're going to be sure of that is just doing one last one. We have this one here. Let's do it like that. Like this. And we'll take that. Whoops. All right, you guys, I'm going to try this one last time. We'll kind of wait to bail out on me. All right, there it is. Right? And what if I do this? If I do negative 6 here and I hit enter. Well, is that what you anticipated? And it did, right? This, the, this is where we started from, right? And it moved it down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The next question you should start asking yourself is, what if you change two things? And I'm just going to leave you with this to think about. If I give you this equation... If I say absolute value of x plus 5, the whole thing minus 2, where is that going to end up? And how do I know by looking at this that this, is, this thing is going to have a vertex at the point negative 5, negative 2? And it does, doesn't it? Why is that true, I guess, is, is the question that you can start asking yourself. Why is this thing have this vertex way down here? All right, so good work. Hope you enjoy this, and I'd love to hear your comments. Subscribe.